Hello and welcome back to Hook Boxing. We interviewed Jake Pollard, a really interesting, very nice guy. He's a journeyman boxer, he's lost over 60 fights, he's won just one fight and yet he keeps on going and I think it's a really interesting part of boxing, especially on the UK scene. And a lot of these questions actually come from you guys. So if you want to get involved in future interviews or even a fan debating talk show, whatever, please let me know. All the links are below. Most of the stuff came from TikTok, so that's probably where you really want to be following. Uh, it's Hook Boxing on TikTok or just use the link. And yeah, subscribe, like on here as well to get the interviews. And let's get straight into it. Yeah, thank you very much. When you started boxing, what was your goal? Um, to make some money, I suppose. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have liked to have um, possibly fought for maybe an area title at some point. Um, but now I'm well established as a, a, a journeyman. Um, it's hard to get into position to maybe fight for a title. Um, you know, because if I start winning fights, um, things change, you know, and uh, so yeah, it's just I would like love to fight for an area title, but it's just getting to the position to fight for one, it's not that simple, it's quite difficult, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the main goal for me is to make some money. That's fair enough. So, when you started that, it was purely money based, that was the yeah, I mean. I didn't really understand it as much as I, I do now. So I suppose it wasn't as much um, like now, you know, it's just it's a living and it's making money. Whereas when I first started, I, I suppose I, I had a bit more of an open mind towards it rather than thinking I just want to make some money. <laughs> um, yeah. I want you aware where it was going to go, I suppose, when I first started professional boxing. But yeah, now, I mean, yeah, it's just mainly about enjoying it and making money. Mm. So why do you keep boxing after 62 losses? Why why keep going? First of all, because I love it. Um, I enjoy these fights. Like People don't understand. They look at it and they think, you know, I've had 63 losses now. Six, Yeah, I think that was my 64th on Saturday. So, yeah, anyway, a lot of losses. Uh, people think that I'm just going and getting filled in. Um and I'm getting paid to get beaten up really. And it's not that at all. Like, you know, uh, my last fight on Saturday, it was a 40 36, so I didn't get around. But, you know, someone actually come up to me after and said, although the other fighter won every round, it doesn't show true reflection on the fight because I pushed him back, I had him on the back foot, I was mm. pushing the pace. Um, he was working more than me, but it were I were definitely involved in the fight. You know, it done. It's not a true reflection. So I keep boxing because you know I do make money off it, and the money's good. And also, I really enjoy my job at what I do as a journeyman. Yeah. Do you? How, do you get competitive like when you're in there? Do you want to win? Yeah. Yeah. So I get. Um. I don't. I won't say I get com competitive as if um but I, like when I'm in there I push the pace um I push these lads back I do make them work I tend to not throw as many shots as these lads that's why I'm not winning fights because I might throw one punch to they might throw five to my one yeah. um and although there's quite a lot of fights I've fought and I've probably landed more clean shots I'd say a lot of my fights, I land more clean shots than they do. Most of their shots hit me gloves, you know, but the referee's just scoring work rate, basically, and, and then they get the win and and I get the loss. Hmm. What do your uh, friends and family think of you doing it? Um, me, They're all fine with it. I mean, I suppose when I first started... Uh, my dad was sharing a lot on Facebook and I had to kind of say, look, when people are asking you every week, when, you know, because you're publicising it a bit, yeah. people are going to ask you, how did he do? I said, and every week, you know, most weeks you're going to be saying he lost. And yeah, yeah. and so, you know, um, so yeah, it took a bit of getting used to it. I mean, they don't, my friends, my friends understand the game, you know, I've explained it to them. My family understand it as well. And 
when I go in there, I get a lot of good feedback from commentators. I mean, uh, one of the board officials said to me over there that your defence is so good. Uh, the best one I heard, I boxed in Belfast a few weeks ago, and the commentator said, Pollard's watertight defence, and that's the best one I've heard yet, watertight. Oh, I mean, it yeah. doesn't get no tighter than that, does it? So they understand, I mean, the, my family hear all that, and they they can see that I'm not just getting beaten up. My defence is really good, and I'm not actually taking a lot of punishment. Mm. So they, they don't have a problem with it in, on that sense, I suppose. Yeah, so it's just the start, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the start, yeah, it was just just for everyone to understand and get their head around because it's not something that you can just sit down and explain, really. It's not that simple, but once you've got your head around it, it it's fine, you know. And yeah, no, I'm not just getting filled in every week. Mm. Uh, is the paycheck worth the amount of fights? Is, like, I'm not obviously asking how much you get paid or anything like that, but is it but, worth it? For me, I mean, I know there's an old saying and I've heard it before and it never really rung through to me, but it is just finally ringing through and it's find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And yeah. for me, that is boxing. Like, I, I'm going to these fights. I've I've established my role in boxing. I know what I'm there for and what I'm meant to do. So the decision at the end, it, that's irrelevant to me. It doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, I did get one win. I didn't feel no different when I got that win. It wasn't like I would over at Moon, you know. I felt mm. no different to any other day. Um, so, for me, it is because I love it. Now, if I didn't love it, I couldn't turn up every week and go do it and just for the money. Uh, it's not mm. good enough for that, in my opinion. But because I love it as well, yeah, I was getting paid. And, yeah, yeah, it, it makes it worth it. But, like I say, I think it's only worth it because I love it as well. Yeah. I wouldn't just do it for the love and I wouldn't just do it for the money, but the combination but, of both, the love and the money, it makes it worth it for me. You can't show up and look fat yeah. and, yeah. So do you struggle with the training ever? Because you know you are Not going at all. to I, lo no? I love training. I I train a lot. Um, I train nearly every day. I do some sort of, some form of training every, every single day. Yeah. Uh, which I really enjoy. Like I enjoy training. It's not um, like a task for me, you know. Okay. I like that. I'm learn. I'm learning more and more as as time's gone on, especially over the last past year. I've learned so much about training, nutrition, all that, and I'm constantly going at it with kind of an open mind. I mean, you've got a lot of people on Instagram and stuff these days, and. I watch a lot. I don't take it all on board because some of it I look at and think, mm, I don't, you know, that doesn't sound yeah, very yeah. good to me. Other things I look at and I'll think, you know, I'm going to try bring that into my routine. Um, yeah. So I don't struggle with the training because I really en I enjoy it. Like I'll fight on a, a Saturday and then I'll probably do a light session on a Sunday, back training Monday light and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'll train up to the day before the fight still. Okay. Um, I think <laughs> I, my personality and how I am, I mean, I have friends say to me, like, do you ever just sit down and watch telly and stuff? You know, that's just me. I, I, I don't yeah. stop. I, I think if I didn't train like that, I don't know what I'd do myself. It, it just fits in with me. It's, it's how hmm. I work. Do you ever hold back in a fight to make sure that you can win? So to make sure that you can still get future fights? Because obviously if you start winning... There's yeah. going to be maybe less demand. So, I don't. I don't hold back. One thing I do sometimes, if if the opponent's very sharp and quite heavy-handed, yeah, I don't hold back. But when I let my hands go to attack, that's when I can get it. Then because my hands are away from my face, yeah. So I might not want to take as many risks by not throwing as many punches. You know, as soon as I throw a punch, that's a risk because my hand's away from my chin. So I don't hold back, but at the same time, I will take less risks. Okay. You know, by thinking, because if I get stopped, then I can't fight for a month then. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like me trying to take a lot of risks and throw a lot of punches, but then it might. I might get clipped then. So I, I don't hold back, but I, I restrict the amount of risks that I take. Hardest person you've ever been in there with? 
Um, it's this is difficult. Um, I suppose the hardest one is not a difficult question. Uh, um, see, I've got I've got my stoppages on my record two, which were really early, um, and I've also got uh, two uh, fairly more recent, which obviously I got stopped, so you could say they were difficult, but I want really in the right place at the time when I've had them fights. Yeah. So I can't really reflect on that because I'm not the might have still stopped me when if if I was feeling up to it, but I, I wasn't, so I can't reflect on them. Um they've obviously got me out of there. I had one not so long since, uh on a Frank Warren show, um Charlie Hickford. That was very difficult, but it, Charlie's a natural featherweight, whereas I'm not a natural featherweight. So, mm. you know, that was hard, but was it hard because he's quite a few weight classes above me? That's a possibility. Um, so it's hard for me to really pick because the weight's varied. Like, um, I know Brandon Scott always rings uh, rings bells when um, they ask for hard fights. Yeah. Brandon Scott's a really good fighter. He's signed with Eddie Earn now. Um, his name always pops up, and there has been others, but like I say, circumstances always, it's hard, you know, to pick one, because each circumstance is different, whether it's the weight, my own circumstance, um, mm. you know, uh, whatever way, fighters, we were always on the road, we might have a long long travelling, so, yeah, but Brandon Scott always does ring, ring bells when I talk about hard fights, and one of the best oppositions I've been in with. Mm. I've seen him. Uh, he's commented and liked a lot of your stuff as well on Instagram. He's a nice guy. And... He's a nice, very, really nice yeah, guy. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, I've got him on Instagram. Yeah, he, he, we kind of keep in contact through, like you say, liking and, and watching each other's stuff. But uh, he's definitely up at top of the list when we talk about hard fights and best yeah. opposition. And the final, sort of more serious question is. Do you ever feel disrespected? Because I think journeymen have like a such a core place in, especially British boxing, that they're yeah. completely necessary. And yet, definitely by a casual fan, can be, in my view, can be disrespected. But do you ever feel it? We get massively disrespected. I mean, m- me myself personally, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Probably other than my five year old son. My fa- yeah. my, the opinion of my five-year-old son is the only opinion in this world that I genuinely care about. Like other than that, I, so but we get you couldn't do this job as a journeyman without thick skin. I mean, yeah. there were a lot of social media stuff about me when I got my first win, um, and there were posts that boxing groups were putting up about me that were um, not intentionally disrespecting me but then they, they were getting thousands of comments and they what I didn't read through them because you're wasting your time but yeah. there's a lot of comments like someone should save this guy from brain damage and you know it's like well that's just an uneducated opinion that's down to you being un- uneducated about what's going on here mm. um, home fighters they might not be fighting every week like us but they are sparring every week so they're realistically taking as much or more yeah. punishment than we are. Um, there's a lot of... Di- and then there's the disrespect saying how bad I am because I've only won one fight and I lose all these fights and I'm stupid for boxing and um, the the disrespect. But it changes because when you speak to boxing people who know about the sport, you get treated like a world champion sometimes. Yeah. By boxing people. So it goes from... Uh, uneducated person te- like being massively disrespectful to a boxing person who knows the stuff treating you like a world champion yeah. so it does you do get a lot of disrespect and I do get it but like I say the opinions don't matter to me um, and they just bounce off you get a lot of it but it's yeah. irrelevant that's good I think that's good I, and journeymen do have such a such a key place and like I said definitely in the UK like yeah, second to none. Like it's so yeah, necessary. Yeah, it's massive. And you know what? Like we were talking about this last weekend at a show. Like you'll get boxers who it's not for that. They can't really. They're not very good and stuff. And you'll get and they'll say, might just be a journeyman. It's like 
it's very difficult to be a journeyman. It's an mm. hard job to do. Um, and you get these people going, I might just be a journeyman, as if that's like a bit of a fallback thing. Like, it's easy. It's yeah. like, he's not easy. It's far from easy. And there were a coach telling me, he tells fighters, you're not good enough to be a journeyman. And he says these fighters are gobsmacked. They can't understand him. Yeah. And it's like, it is a talent. Um, it's very difficult. It's a talent to do. But people don't understand it. That's a problem. And then they think that they can just do it. But No. Nah, well, they'd get knocked out. And, yeah. <laughs> they'd be fighting 12 times a year, knocked out 12 times a year. That's all. Just, yeah, just exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, well, they did end up getting hurt. You know, we don't get mm. hurt. That's the key to to being a good journeyman. We are fighting every week, and we do we don't get hurt. Yeah. And then my final my final thing is it's I mean I don't know I assume he's not serious. I asked on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, what would you ask a journeyman boxer? I'm interviewing Jake Paul. Blah blah blah. And I got some yeah. like serious ones that I've asked you, and then I got one guy who said, I'm officially calling him out. <laughs> and he's like, him out. yeah and i put in the comments get a pro license and then i'm sure i'm sure he'll do it but tell I, him yeah tell you him tell him everybody. yourself got me a clip <laughs> every man's got a price so you offer me right money tell me where you want me when you want me and i will be there <laughs> and i've got 64 people who can guarantee that i'll be there because i've done it for them already <laughs> there we go and my final, my final thing is not actually a question. It's just um, I've seen you fight. I thought you fought, uh, saw you fight Frankie Story. Um, oh yeah, back a while ago. Yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah, I remember because your hair at the time was yeah causing all sorts of problems in the corner and the referee. The right one, uh, yeah. <laughs> Go on, sorry, I'll let you finish your question. No, that's no, not a question. I was just saying oh. about it because I wanted to so, say um, yeah. Got to make James. So that fight. Obviously, the back of my hair is long. I've got the top and sides cut, so it doesn't go in my eyes when I fight. But the back's yeah. long now. When I used to fight, I used to take it all out and have it down because it's at the back, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, and, you know, end of day, we're putting a show on in there. That's what we're doing. And the hair were all just part of the show. And I, thank you, Story. What will I have been on then? I bet I were on close to 50 fights. I bet I was on late 40s fights. So every yeah. fight I've had my hair down. I got in the ring for that fight and the referee said, where's your hair tie? I, I was like, what do you mean? It, it's, this is our fight every week. Mm. And he said, well, I, I don't believe that. I'm like, well, I fight every week with my hair down. There's No one's ever said a word to me. It's never been an issue. Um, and he said, where's your hair tie? I said, it's in the changing room. He said, well, obviously, you knew then, didn't you? And I'm like, this is what I do every week. It's not, it's never been an issue. So yeah. that's why he had us put in tape and all sorts on my hair. Uh -huh. So since, since then, I, I apply it now because of that. But like, like I said, I'd done 40 fights with with it down and it were always fine. And then yeah. that referee wasn't keen on it. So no, no, he was not happy. It was after every round as well. He was coming up and having a great Yeah, go. telling us off. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'd make sure it's platted now, so it's all it's all tucked in, and there's no issues. But there were no issues before that. Um, it would just, you know, that referee wasn't keen on it, and that was that. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that because uh, my I went with my friend James, so he'll be annoyed if I don't mention it because he uh, he messaged me last <laughs> night when I did that video saying about if anybody wants to ask a question, he was like, "We've seen him box now." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." Yeah, you know, <laughs> thank you, Stormy. I, I maybe not mention him much when um, people ask about tough fights, but that were a very tough fight, Frankie Story. I mean, he hammered me. Um, mm. I took it well, like, but yeah, he. Uh, I remember his corner man coming to me after the fight, and he said that Frankie had gone back to his corner. I think after the third round, I think, and said, "I don't know what to do. He's hard as fuck." Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't yeah. know if I'm allowed to swear on here, but uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what he he'd gone. Frankie had gone back to his corner man and said, "I, I don't know what to do. He's hard as fuck." And it, well, yeah, we're just hammering him. I took it well. Yeah, it was it was good. I remember that it was a good night of boxing that actually. But yeah, yeah and and Frankie's a southpaw and and um, yeah. uh, I'm not as effective with southpaws to be fair. That's all right. Well, that's that's everything I've got. If you want to um, shout anything out, then please go ahead. Um, all your links will be below anyway, or like Instagram and stuff. So. Yeah, no, um, I just appreciate the help from 
you know, my head trainer Mark Early is a is a real class act, and um, I've got like so Jimmy first. He comes down now to do my corners. Um, Jimmy's a great guy. You know, we've got a great bunch of lads at gym. Uh, there's a lad I manage, Nabil Ahmed. He's a class journeyman. Um, he's just got a draw actually. Uh, Nabil's class. Uh, but yeah. yeah, we've just got a real good group of people, and this is a part of the reason why. I enjoy boxing so much as well as the fact I enjoy it. I enjoy the company that it brings as well. Mm. Yeah, it's great. It's good sport. It's good for friendship as well. I mean, it doesn't feel like it would be, but when you actually... You get the best type of people I find in boxing. Some really good people. And there we are. That was it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was some really great bits. I think it was very interesting. Uh, Let me know what else you want to see. I've got some other stuff lined up um, that hopefully all comes through. Whether or not it does, I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, like I said at the start, if you want to get yourself involved in these and have your name on the screen like some of these do, then you have to be following the TikTok. I think is the best place. Um, anywhere else is appreciated, but TikTok is the one if you want to get involved yourself. Please do subscribe here, like here, uh, share it, whatever. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and let me know what you thought. Thank you very much and bye.